Thank you for watching KTN News and welcome to this part where we have a discussion on that tragic situation that the country finds itself in. We woke up to a situation where three Kenyans have died, close to 300 people in hospital nursing serious injuries. And to have this discussion, to just understand our disaster preparedness, with me is Anthony Mushiri from Red Cross. Uh, he is the Emergency Preparedness and Response Manager at Red Cross. Anthony, welcome uh, to KTN News as we have this discussion. And Anthony, that is a very sad you, story that the country finds itself in. And let me just ask you in terms of disaster preparedness as a country, as a county, as a region, just Embakasi, where are we? How are we? Are we prepared? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Seth. And uh, really on behalf of uh, Kenya Red Cross, uh, thank you for having us. Yes, it's a sad reality what we woke up to uh, early morning today, but uh, for Red Cross it wasn't waking up to. We were there in the wee hours uh, after midnight, uh, we responded, and as I uh, just have you asked, we are prepared to certain levels as a country uh, from the kind of uh, multi-agency uh, operation that happened yesterday night. I can say we are prepared to an extent. The thing is hazards how people and uh, how vulnerable people are and when they interlock with the hazard, that's what we don't have good preparedness. Because you can see what you're dealing with right now is a hazard which was literally in between uh, a residential area. So it's not more so about uh, our preparedness in terms of responding to disasters or emergencies, as it is more of uh, how hazards are interlocking with the people and uh, just their vulnerability levels. Yes. And even as you talk about hazards, um, I know we we're getting reports that um, uh, this plant was there illegally, um, several court cases, arrests, uh, people serving time. And as that entire situation falls up, therefore brings the question of us as citizens, what is our responsibility when we see such hazards? Who do we go to? Who do we go to report to to get assistance? Because uh, reports on ground indicate that people had actually complained about this. So. Where do we go? Where do Kenyans go to report such incidents? Well, uh, ultimately, it starts with the police. Uh, secondly, of course, uh, NEMAs of the days. And uh, it's upon now citizen to, to really take action. Uh, part of action will be moving out of uh, houses which you can see clear uh, hazards around you. And this will uh, petition the land owners or landlords to now push further for such uh, hazards to be eliminated or removed from their spaces because if you take action by not uh, going into those properties, then landlords maybe have a bigger muscle than the individual. But really, uh, it starts with the police, it starts with the NEMA, and of course, you yourself looking at your safety and deciding, you know, this is uh, not a safe space for me, I should not stay here, mm -hmm. yes. It also brings the question of, as, as, as a populace in this country, the need of understanding the importance of having a skill, that is, having first aid skills with you, so that in case such thing happens, you know what to do, you know how to respond to this. Yes. How important is it for uh, the government, for stakeholders, to just take this information to the people so that we, uh, everyone in the Republic, is prepared whenever such incidences call for first aid? Well, it's a, as you said, it's a skill and it's a life skill. So the idea is how much of the population can we cover with this skill? I like it that the CBC has a way of uh, introducing first aid uh, to learners, but it should go beyond that. It should be part of uh, an orientation, a mon mandatory item in uh, offices. The same way you have the Factory Act. I bet first aid as a skill should be told to everyone across uh, the country. And that being said, everyone will have an impulse of what's safety, because uh, first it is not just about how you treat others, but what you look around for you so that you prevent uh, any um, disaster or any accidents uh, from taking place. So really, we can go beyond the CBC part and extend it to as a factory level uh, through the factory act such that then it's trained to entire populations uh, through the offices, and really uh, employers can take it upon themselves. It doesn't have to be a part of an act. We are taking care of our lives. So why not uh, emphasize and ensure that people have been trained on these uh, special skills? Mm -hmm. At the Red Cross, we have a whole unit uh, for, uh, training school, which does so much of uh, first aid trainings uh, to different organizations and uh, to different groups of uh, schooling groups. But really, as you said, it's a skill that we all need, and uh, we should embrace it and uh, take it 
further and never wait for such disasters. And Anthony, even as this disaster continues, um, I mean, the numbers of people who are in hospital being treated continues to go up. And as Red Cross, um, you have an emergency contact center and uh, also ways that Kenyans would, uh, would be able to reach. Just paint a picture of what exactly it is that hospitals are dealing with and how as uh, Kenyans we could help our fellow brothers and sisters. Okay, thank you. Uh, currently the hospitals are dealing with uh, burns, uh, both uh, second and third degree burns, and really for burns we need a lot of uh, plasma. So it's uh, for Kenyans to go out and donate blood, and uh, I mean one pint of blood can be used to treat so many uh, victims of uh, burns. So there's a lot of uh, plasma needed in the treatment of burns, and uh, I urge Kenyans to just go out. Uh, Mama Lucy Hospital has an open space right now. They are receiving uh, blood donors. Just go donate blood, and uh, this will go a long way in helping uh, with the current situation in hospitals. Mm -hmm. At um, the site, yes, we have a command center. We set up the command center. We set up uh, our tracing desk. Our tracing desk really is uh, out to restore family links. So. If you have someone you know, someone who resides around the area and you can't reach out to them and you've been unable to get to them, come to this desk uh, or call our hotline number, which is uh, 1199, and we'll able, we, be, we will be able to restore family links by just uh, connecting people with the missed one, the, their uh, loved ones. Right now we have uh, 13 cases uh, we've received uh, today and we are working on them just to ensure that uh, we restore these family links. Uh, the people in hospital who either uh, out of the accident just uh, were taken to hospital, got themselves in hospital, they don't know where their next of kin are, and uh, this is why that desk was set up. We also have a clinic uh, which uh, by end of today, we had already seen uh, 113 people just walking in with soft tissue uh, injuries, uh, surface burns, and this is set out to help the populace. So if you are there, you got uh, burnt, you're injured, and you're still like recuperating somewhere in your house, just come out uh, next to where the fire incident happened. We have a tent which is attending to this. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, um, Anthony, now, I just want you to speak to Kenyans out there on what this is, what, what this has done to the people there. Uh, speak to the authorities that are there. Speak to the police, to the licensing agencies in such a way that these could have been avoided. The Deputy President alluded to the same. Uh, thank you, Seth. Uh, first of all, we, we work in a very uh, coordinated manner with all these agencies. So to appreciate the fact that on ground we had uh, all these agencies uh, and led by the National Police, we were in charge of uh, first aid and the medical side of things. What I would speak to in this light is that uh, beyond licensing, beyond not uh, adhering to all the practices that need to be, then it should not exist. It's one thing to be licensed, it's another thing not to be allowed to exist, even as your license is underway. Because uh, we are seeing a situation where a license had been denied three times, but the place was still existing and running. So the idea is, if you're not licensed in the first place, you should not be existing or operating. Uh, from a safety standpoint, again, is just that if you see any potential hazard around you, just uh, avoid it or don't get close to it. And uh, part of this would be moving houses, as I said before. But again, we are looking at burns now, and uh, people with burns, this could take uh, around about uh, three to four weeks to heal. We look at people who are, I would say, joakali from uh, the kind of structures that were burnt down. And really, we're gonna be looking into a phase where livelihoods are affected in a big way, such that if you're missing work for a week or two, chances are that uh, your employer let you go. So we're looking into going into a livelihood situation during the recovery stage and uh, supporting these people into the recovery stages. We have a cash transfer program, which people can plug into it. If you get donors into this program, we are able to handle the people who've been uh, displaced uh, for, let's say, the next two months. So we have a program, but uh, we need donors to come out and uh, support us, uh, funding the program so that uh, we run into it and uh, get these people back and running. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anthony Mushiri uh, from Red Cross. He is the Emergency Preparedness and Response Manager, Kenya Red Cross Society. And if you want uh, to assist your fellow Kenyans, now visit uh, www.redcross.co.ke and also